Blessed is this holy man who was worthy to be numbered among the apostles, for he was a good man filled with the Holy Spirit and with faith. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the feast day of St. Barnabas, as I know, the one of the apostles. He was martyred, served as bishop in Milan, and then later in um, Cyprus for, for many years, was certainly an apostle of, or a follower, could we say, of Jesus Christ without a doubt, but very close to St. Peter and St. Paul also. With that in mind, let us now take a few moments and in preparation for this holy sacrifice, call to mind the times we've sinned and ask God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who decreed that St. Barnabas, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, should be set apart to convert the nations, grant that the gospel of Christ, which he strenuously preached, may be faithfully proclaimed by word and by deed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart. For he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Mamanan, and a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. Then complete hands on them and sent them off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> A responsorial psalm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song. 
with trumpets and the sound of horn, sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Go and teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts, no sack for the journey or a second tunic or sandals or walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it and stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. The Gospel of the Lord. As I've noted, today we celebrate the Feast of St. Barnabas, who eventually dies in Cyprus uh, as a martyr. And we commemorate that today, but he was an early apostle, really kind of chosen to take the place uh, of Judas, because suddenly now we hear about Jesus said to the twelve, the number is there. And this particular apostle really, as I noted, was a real trusted confidant of Peter and Paul. Some say that he was, as some of the older writings note that he was a cousin of Mark the Evangelist. In any case, we have a situation here who, as we heard in the first reading and as he's portrayed in the Acts of the Apostles, he had um, sort of a personality that was very open to the people's heart for the gospel. And he was able to, could we say, identify that and convert that. The Acts, and we heard it today, called him a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith. Certainly complimentary words, finding them in scripture. But truly he was a perfect helper for the early church to go out to preach, to evangelize, and the church started to grow. We also find his name in the Eucharistic prayer, Eucharistic prayer one, after the consecratory prayer. The name is raised, thus today I will use Eucharistic prayer number one. But let's look the, to the gospel message that's chosen for this Feast of St. Barnabas. We find Jesus Christ teaching the disciples on how to announce the good news of the kingdom. And what we don't have is the, the immediate phrase used before this gospel speaks of the lost sheep of Israel. So that whole idea that there's something lost and that has to be taken care of um, helps us in a context, I think, with this gospel. And we hear the idea that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. By this, Jesus Christ authorizes his disciples, not only authorizes, but really he commands them to bring power of the kingdom to bear on their works and on the people, on the people who are sick, those who are lepers, those afflicted with demons. It's not just they who go out with the word, but the whole power of the kingdom. And also this idea of the kingdom at hand. It's not understood that Jesus meant to say, you know, that the end is near. Some people have that, that dialogue has gone back and forth, and even some back in the day thought that Christ, that's what Christ was saying. But that's not the case. 
Um, more scripture scholars, also some time ago, but almost immediately afterward, started to speak um, that really it was to present what, um, a different kind of message of Christ. He talks about the fact to, to cure the sick, to raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and drive out demons. Now these were all people who were excluded from society back in the day. You know, it wasn't the, only the Christian community that was forming. There were other communities forming for some, if you want to say, other faith groups. They had false gods. Now all those groups, and that is the Jewish faith included, excluded this whole group of people. people. Lepers, if someone was sick, um, it, certainly anyone who had had any contact with a dead person for a time had to assume a totally different, should we say, place or status within the temple community. And also those who they felt were possessed by demons. But Christ says, no, don't exclude this group. You bring them in. And we set about to cure the sick, to drive out demons, to cure the lepers, to raise the dead. Be very direct to the apostles. What are they to go out and do? So I think we, we need to look sometimes our own society, the strife we face today. It's inclusion Christ was calling for. Okay, people, once they came in, if you wanted to say that when the de demons were driven out, they then had to live a good life. It wasn't just, okay, bring everybody in and everybody do as they want. No, there was corrective measures. This whole cleansing process was put in. But the first thing Christ is saying, include in the community those that other societies are casting out. Let them see the role of faith in the lives of all of you. Give the example. Let them hear the gospel message and let that change their lives. So really, Christ gives two kinds of instructions, the positive here, if you want, and the negative. If we look at the negative, he says, take no money. A little drastic in this day and age, but set out to preach that word. And he talks about gold has no place in, in, in the belts that someone wears. And also he talks about, you know, traveling, but without many basic items that back in the day they would take up. And he talks about leave behind sandals and your walking stick. Tough terrain back in the day uh, with stones in many places, uh, even the growth, the low brush that would grow, lots of uh, thistles and thorns and things like that, plants that produce those. And th leave behind your traveling stick. Okay, they'd lean on it, that's true. But it was a defense weapon also. A weapon against animals if they tried to harass you in some way or you appear to them to be prey. And also against robbers along the way. So Christ is really saying, listen, stream down to what the basic necessities. It's you that is needed to proclaim that word. And we all have to hear that because we're all called to live the message of the Lord to speak it and through our deeds to witness to it. Sometimes we take a, feel we need a lot of things, we need a lot of gadgets to do it. I think Christ was talking the opposite, not needed, props, and ways of using props in certain things. Don't speak the word and live the word. The positive, really we hear coming through, he doesn't say it, but it's place all your trust in God. That's what Christ is really saying to those who will go out. Put your trust in the Lord, not just for his word, but for your strength also, for the powers to cure, to heal, to drive out demons. This idea, the positive about wherever you go and stay, say peace to that household. And if there is, you know, peace within, it will remain. If not, it'll come back. Another gospel says if there's a, 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 a peaceful person, I think we have to ask ourselves if we were at a gathering, which we are when we're at Mass, and the celebrant says, you know, peace be with you. That's where that comes from. Many greetings, Christ said that, but here in a particular way, identify, does that peace rest on you, my brothers and sisters? That's the real point here. Christ said, because if there isn't a peaceful person there, it will return to the one giving the greeting. So. We need to be conscious of that in our own lives. Sometimes, as I've said many times, 
You don't think of yourselves in these gospel messages. We're there. We're standing. You and I were, were to be the recipients of that. Peace be with you. We determine if it lights upon us, not someone else. But it's not a given that it will. That we have to understand from the gospel. You and I have to be the kind of person that fosters that. Also, the, the phrase, uh, the sheep among the wolves, the vulnerability, the helplessness that that conveys. And Christ sends them out in that way. He's taken away the, you know, all these things we heard. But sheep among the wolves, but still there to go out, give that witness to Jesus Christ. And another phrase he uses as simple as doves. <clears throat> Simple means, in this case, of a single-mindedness, not a mixture of reasons. We see that dove fly around, a determination, a route, single-mindedness. Not simple in the sense that they're not thinking, they're not intellectual beings. No, the single-mindedness. That's how you and I have to be for the Lord. That's how we're called to be. So as we hear this gospel on this Feast of St. Barnabas, I think we have to ask ourselves, how do you, how do I, how do we together announce the kingdom today? How do we do it in the face of a, a pandemic that we're living through? It's difficult. How do we do it in the face of the social unrest we presently see in our own country? Another difficulty. But truly Christ spoke in telling his apostles what to go out, it, there was no room for that exclusionary clause. No, he, we were to welcome. We were to heal, to cure. So let each one of us look to ourselves. Does that peace of Christ land on me? If not, is there something I need to change that it will? And you know, and how do we, how do we announce the kingdom? by what we say, by our actions. Are we joyful in life? Are a little just kind of moving life through life, not being seeing the gift of life that we've been given? Let us go forward, all of us, as brothers and sisters in Christ, hearing the instructions here of our Lord, how the Christians should live and fulfill the word of the Lord. Let us go forward, living that life and fulfilling his word. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Called to bring healing and peace in our world, we now bring our gifts to the Father along with our prayers and petitions. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Father, he continued to be filled with the Holy Spirit as he strives to lead the church forward in these difficult times. For him we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For Holy Mother Church throughout the world, that she will always be the bearer, the messenger of Christ's word, Christ's peace. For her we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the nations and their authorities, that in all situations, they will recognize the the recognize and respect the unique human dignity that the Lord gives to every human being. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those tuned in today through this live streaming and for their families, that the Lord continue to place his healing hand upon you, that the Lord fill you with his peace and your families. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, particularly those impacted by the pandemic, or even those who have lost their life to some violence we see in our society, that each one of them may come to know the joy of God's mercy and enter into his kingdom. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we place our petitions before you, knowing that your mercy is abundant and you will take care always of your children. We do ask these petitions through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in Christ's divinity as he humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. <clears throat> Sanctify with your blessing, we pray, O Lord, the offerings presented here, so that by your grace they may set us on fire with the flame of your love, by which St. Barnabas brought the light of the gospel to the nations through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but brought the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants for whom we now pray. <clears throat> and all gathered here and live streaming, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, with Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by their protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve the offering, this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord 
Jesus Christ. On the day that he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised heaven to you, O God, Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, this holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your holy priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through the participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. <clears throat> Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all the saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your protection through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> As we receive the pledge of eternal life, we humbly implore you, Lord, that what we celebrate in sacramental signs on the memorial of the blessed apostle Barnabas, we may one day behold unveiled through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat>